Hey, what's going on guys? In this video, I'm going to show you how to deploy a Laravel application to a shared web hosting account the absolute easiest way possible. All right, now I'm not going to say that this is the fastest or the best way, but it is definitely the easiest because we're just going to use FTP. We're not going to use the shell or anything like that. I'm, I will probably make a video separately on using those methods because we can use the shell in, in many um, sh with many shared hosting accounts. Now it's important to mention with shared hosting, you, you basically have everything set up for you. You have a cPanel account where you can you know create emails and databases and all that. You already have PHP installed, Apache, MySQL, all that stuff. Now the hosting company that I'm using is InMotion Hosting, which I've used for years. I would definitely recommend them to uh, just about anybody. There's an affiliate link in the description if you guys do decide to purchase a package, please use that link. Um, you can see they offer, I do have a VPS account, um, they offer dedicated servers, but we're going to be dealing with the cheapest, the business hosting here, which is the cheapest shared hosting account. It's only $5.99 per month. All right, now I already have an account set up, and this is my cPanel for that account. You can see it's using the domain codeskillet.com. So if I go to codeskillet.com, you'll see that it's just an empty directory. Okay, the, this is where we want our Laravel application to live. All right, now the application we're going to be deploying is the one we built in the Laravel from scratch series on YouTube. If you haven't watched that series, I would highly suggest going back and watching that. I think it's 12 videos. So we basically just have a, a website here with some pages, but we also have a blogging platform. Now I've deleted all of the posts and all of the users from the database. We just have the tables set up. Um, but there's full CRUD functionality for posts. There's an authentication system. We can register. We can log in. Uh, I'm not going to go through it here because I already know that it works. Everything works on my local machine. We'll go ahead and test it when we upload it to our host. All right, now we're going to need to create a database on codeskillet.com. So this is the cPanel, and they make it very, very easy. If we go under databases, you'll see MySQL database wizard. So let's click that. And by the way, if you're not using InMotion and you're using something like HostGator, the cPanel interface is pretty much identical to this. All right, now it's going to prefix our database name with your account name. In my case, it's going to be code skill underscore. And then I'm going to call this database LS app. All right, and then I'm going to give the user the same name. Okay, so we're going to create a user. Let's give them a password. It has to be a certain strength or it won't let you. And then let's say create user. We're going to select all privileges for this user. And now we, if we go back to MySQL databases, you'll see we have the database created as well as the user and they're connected. So that's all set. Now we're going to have to bring in our tables from our local machine. So uh, if you've been following along, then you should have PHP my admin set up and you can see in our database, which is called LS app, we have our tables. Um, there's nothing in the users and posts. I cleared everything out. Um, but we do need to export the whole data structure. So what we'll do is make sure you're looking at the, the correct database and then click export and then go. And we're going to download a file called whatever your database is called dot SQL. All right. And if you look in the GitHub repository uh, for this application, you'll see that I have a folder called underscore SQL and that has this file in it. OK, if you guys haven't been following along with the whole thing. So now that we have that, let's go back to our cPanel and we're going to click on PHP my admin here, which will take us to the remote version of, of our PHP my admin. And we already created the database. It's right here. Code skill LS app. Click on that and then we're going to import and then click choose file and we're going to grab. Uh, let's see, where did I put it? I put it on my desktop. I think I did. Yeah, lsapp.sql. So I'm going to grab that and then click go. And that's going to import the database. And it shouldn't take long because it's very small. All right, so that's successful. So if we look in our da remote database now, you can see we have all of our tables. All right, so that's all set. Now what we need to do is bring the files onto our remote server. So for that, I'm going to open up FileZilla which is an FTP client. Just search if you don't have it, just search for FileZilla client download. All right, and then we can connect to it using the cPanel details. So the host is going to be codeskillet.com. 
the username is code skillet and then my password. Click OK. And then that's going to bring us into our account. Now, if if for some reason your cPanel login doesn't work here, you can actually create more FTP accounts. If you go to right here, FTP accounts, and you can create them here and you'll be able to use those in FileZilla. All right. So no matter how you're doing this, whether you're using FTP or you're um, you're cloning the Git repository through the through your shell, through your terminal, you need to basically put your whole application. Let me just open up the local version of the app. Which is in my HT docs LS app. So we want to put everything here into not uh, not into the public HTML, but into a separate folder that we're going to create. So I'm going to call it LS app. All right. Now you want everything here in there, but the public folder right here, all these these need to go into public HTML. Okay. So what we'll do is first go into LS app. And we're going to bring everything here and we don't need the public folder in LS app. So except for that, we'll bring everything over. All right. Now that's going to take quite a while. It could take, you know, 10, maybe 15 minutes, depending on your connection. And that's one thing that really sucks about FTP. It's slow. Um, it's also not encrypted. But again, it is it is the easiest for beginners. And that's what this tutorial is focused on. All right, so what I'm going to do is just pause this and wait for everything to upload and then I'll be back. All right, guys, so everything is uploaded to LS app. Now we need the public. So we're going to go into public HTML. And we're going to go over here and grab everything that's in our public folder. And bring that over here and I will be back when that's done. All right, guys, so that's all set. Now we have all of our public folders. Now what I'm going to do is go back to the browser here and go back to codeskillet.com and reload and you're going to see these errors here. So this is happening because we need to tell it to look inside of that LS app folder that we uploaded. So we need to actually edit one of these files. So in the public HTML folder, uh, there is an index.php file. So we need to edit that. Let me just delete these real quick. So I'm going to bring the index.php file outside onto my local machine and we're going to just open that up. I'll just use sublime text and we need to just change these two lines. Okay, this one and this one. Uh, and we want to go right before boot, the bootstrap and say LS app slash same thing right here. LS app slash so it knows to look in there and then we'll save it and let's go ahead and re upload it. All right. Now, if we go and we check out codeskillet.com and reload, you'll see that now it works. All right. Now the about page is going to work. Services is going to work. Blog, however, is not because it's actually looking for um, the database tables, but the, the credentials for the database are not correct. They're still set to the local stuff. So what we need to do is go back into our FTP and go to uh, our LS app folder and then the dot env. I'm going to bring that out. And then we're going to go ahead and edit that. And we need to add the correct credentials. So you can see I just have them marked as XXX, but we're going to change this to code skill underscore LS app because that's what we called the database. We also called the user that same thing. And then the password, I'm going to put that in here as well. And then we'll save it. And then let's re upload it. All right, so now we'll go back and reload. And now the post page works. And we should be able to register. We should be able to upload posts. The only thing that's left is the image sim link. Because right now, if we try to upload an image, it's going to go to the storage folder. But if you remember, we actually created a sim link to the public storage folder. And we need to recreate that on our host. Now we could do it through the shell, but since this is for, you know, absolute beginners, what I'm going to do is create a new PHP file and we're going to do it through there. So let's create a file called uh, we'll just call it simlink create dot PHP. All right. And then we're going to open that up. Oops, I want to open that with sublime. OK, and then we just need to put a line of code in here which is really simple. So we just need our PHP tag 
and we're going to call the symlink function. And we want to put in first the directory we want to create the symlink from, which is going to be home slash and then whatever your cPanel account name. Mine's code skillet. And then ls app storage slash app slash public. Okay, and that's where the images get uploaded. Now we want to create a symlink to our public HTML storage folder. So that's going to be home code skillet slash public underscore HTML slash storage. All right, and that's it. So let's save it. We're going to upload it now to our public HTML folder so we can run it in the browser right here. All right, and then we'll go to our browser and let's go to codeskillet.com slash create Simlink, I think that's what I called it. Dot PHP. No, it's not what I called it. Uh, Simlink create. Okay, so that ran. Now, if we look in our FTP and we reload the public HTML folder, you'll see we have a storage Simlink. So everything should be all set. Let's just make sure we delete the Simlink create file. All right, and now let's go back to CodeSkillet.com. And we should be deployed. So let's go ahead and register a user. Register. Okay, so now we're logged in. Let's go ahead and create a post. So we'll say test post one. This is a test and let's upload an image. So I'll just grab my let's see, I'll grab my desktop background image, click submit. And there we go. Post created. You can see the image went through. Since we're logged in and this is our post, we have the edit and delete buttons. We can also go to the dashboard and we can edit. Let's just test it out. We'll change it to the number one and submit. And you can see that changed. And that should be good. All right. So we now have a deployed Laravel application and we didn't even have to touch the terminal or, or the SSH. All right. And if you guys want me to do another video showing you uh, a better, faster way to do it, but more complicated, I can do that as well. We'll have to set up our SSH keys and, and so on. Now, the last thing I want to mention to you guys is I just wrapped up a 10 project Laravel course. So there's projects that range um, in different technologies. For instance, in one project, we use Vue.js on the front end. In another, we use Postgres for our database. So there's, there's mixed in technologies that really give you a good overview of, of building Laravel projects. All right, now there's an affiliate link in the description. I would highly uh, appreciate if you could use that link and also use the code Traversy if you wanna get 50% off. It's only 49 bucks. 50% off, you're only going to pay around $25 for a 10 project course. So I would definitely suggest that, guys, uh, and I would appreciate it. And that's it. Thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next video.